you hear me? No music. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Racers News Network Live. Have an amazing man joining me this week. Of course, everybody knows him, Pete Sanka, the the savior of the Vega. <laughs> I, don't know if that's, I don't know if that's a compliment or not. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, buddy? Very good. How about yourself? Good, good. So uh, a lot to talk about this week. We have another championship decided here in Division One in Top Alcohol Funny Car. We'll get to that in just a few minutes. Um, kind of wrapping up the season, unfortunately. Yeah, here in the it's, Northeast. Uh, it's bittersweet. It's cool to see all the points battles shaking out and seeing where everyone lands. Uh, but it also means we're getting pretty close to the cold white stuff, and that kind of sucks. Yes, it does. A lot of uh, a lot of people are, according to Facebook and everything, are making plans to uh, to do some traveling already. It looks like all the players always travel. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Well, some of them will go from one side of the country to the other for the yeah. to keep the points lead. So, I I did the traveling thing once, and. Uh, Definitely didn't shake out the way I was hoping, but I will tell you it was a great experience to to go down to where did I go? I think I went Silver Dollar, Georgia, and then I went to the Rock, uh, and it was I think I won three rounds between both races put together, but uh, it was a hell of an experience just to be in it and and do the traveling, and it was uh, definitely cool stuff, no doubt. Yeah, you, you know, you get out, you get to see a little bit of the country, too, that you don't always get to see. And then, you know, like I said, when when it's time to travel up here, typically that means winter's coming and you head south or head west where, it, you know, it's a little yeah. bit more comfortable, too. Yeah, and it, it was two tracks that I never raced at either, which made it pretty cool. Always like going to a new place. There you go. Even better. Um, so we had our last guessing game for uh, the season this year I'm yep. very happy to say that we are going to bring that back it was it was kind of on a whim when we started it but uh it took on a life of its own and yeah we're bring it back so everybody seems to enjoy it um, and, the, and the winner is drum roll the, the winner is Lori butler won the last guessing game um for Cecil, uh, Cecil County this past weekend. So, good, good friend of the show. Good friend uh, of the show. Good friend, Sponsor Perry. of their series as yeah, well. Yeah, her husband are great. Uh, they have a lot to do with uh, the Northeast Super Street Association run at Lebanon Valley. Um, just great people and uh, very deserving that she was able to knock down the final one. Very cool. And um, I also spoke with her the other day, too, about making the decision to come back as a sponsor for Nessa in 2022. Yep, without a doubt. So lots of race in action this past weekend. Do you want to you want to start far or do you want to start near? Let's start far. Um, we'll start with Vegas, right? Yes. OK, so because we have so many events, uh, I'm just going to keep this simple uh just not to bore the people watching to death um and i'm probably gonna kill their names too because Jerron isn't here to correct me but uh las vegas they had a double race uh and we are going to go over the results for the first race first obviously because it would be kind of goofy to do that second so we'll start start with uh 890 super Cop. And the winner was Tanner, who, Theobald? Theobald. Theobald. That was close. 
Uh, and he defeated Marco. I can't even. Tarvalis. Right. That person. Uh, <laughs> Tanner also qualified number one. Uh, Super Gas. Hey, there's a name I can pronounce. Michael Miller uh, defeated Norman. Burkhart. Burkhart, yeah. Okay, I'll go Burkhart, with Burkhart, yeah. And uh, Don Anderson qualified number one. And on to my favorite, Super Street. And what is the deal with these people out in Vegas with these crazy last names? Josh D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck with that one. <laughs> Go ahead. Del, uh, Del Rimple? Sure. That, that, that would have been my guess, too. <laughs> Defeated uh, just Dale. There you go. And Nick A, <laughs> qualified number one. <laughs> and hopefully none of these people are friends of the show because, whew, did we just kill all their last names? <laughs> Alejandra. And that brings it to you, thank God. <laughs> All right. Same race. Uh, Cop Eliminator, a name we should all be very, very familiar with. This one's pretty easy, Pete. You want to give that one a try? Or uh, I already switched screens. I can't see it. All right. <laughs> so, taking a win in Cop Eliminator at the final round, Las Vegas, on Saturday the 9th. The one and only Bruno Massel. Massel, yeah, okay. I, I, I would have gotten that one right. Taking out Ralph Van Poppigan. I'm Poppigan. telling you, it's got to be a West Coast thing. These names are out of control. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Number one qualifier in Comp Eliminator. Then I'm kind of glad Jerron is not here because you know he would be giving me crap about the uh, classes and the index right now. Right, right. Well, that's when you send all the results over to him and you let him just do it. You know, it's all on you, buddy. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, number one qualifier in comp, Brad Brewer. Brad, Brad Brewer. I Wait, feel like we should just hang we, up and try again tomorrow over? night. <laughs> can we get a do-over, please? Yeah, really. <laughs> all right. Stock Eliminator, bringing home the Wally, Chris Hall, runner-up, Bill O'Connor, and number one qualifier, Tony Hernandez. And let's see, jump over the other three classes. We'll go right to top sportsman. Paul Mitzos took the Wally home uh, in top sportsman. Runner-up, Monty Green. Number one qualifier, Jeff Connolly. Top dragster, your champ for this particular event, Steve Hamilton. Runner-up, Dean Hall. Number one qualifier, Bradley Johnson. Sportsman Motorcycle, bringing it home. Kahai Woods, uh, runner-up is uh, Anthony Vanetti, and your number one qualifier is Anthony Vanetti. So congratulations to everybody at race number one of two in Vegas. Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to continue on, and then, Pete, you can grab your three as we go. You got it. All right, top alcohol dragster, bringing home the Wally this weekend. Again, this is well, this is race number two, by the way. Right. And alcohol was a contestant in race number one, correct? Correct. Uh, top alcohol dragster, bringing home the win, was Mitch Myers. Runner-up, Michael Burns, number one qualifier, was your champ, Mitch Myers. Low ET was the runner-up of the event, Michael Burns. And top speed was the winner of the event again, Mitch Myers. Top alcohol funny car, bringing it home, Nick Janik, runner up, Hunter Jones, number one qualifier, Nick Janik, low ET, Nick Janik, top speed, Terry Ruckman. Comp eliminator, Brad Brewer wins, runner up, Scott McClay. Number one qualifier was also your champ, Brad Brewer. Jump over to Superstock again, another name that everybody should know. And if you don't, pay better attention. Uh, bringing home the win over Tom Armin Armanino was Justin Lamb. And Tom Armanino, your runner up, number one qualifier, David Stark. Stock eliminator was Scott Burton over C.W. Hofer. 
number one qualifier, Bob Gullett. And uh, let's see, top sportsman was Dan Maziri over David Cook, number one qualifier, Kelly Harper. And unfortunately, my printer cut off the number one qualifier for top dragster. So I do apologize. Uh, your champ, Bradley Johnson over actually Jerron's teammate, Jennifer Weens. And the number one qualifier for top dragster was Steve Will. I got you, buddy. My hero. <laughs> uh, sportsman motorcycle, did you get that? No, that one's in print. Champion winner for sports and motorcycle, Larry Moda. Uh, runner up, Ron Alves, who was also the number one qualifier. Super comp, uh, Matthew Fitchell. Fischel? Yeah, Fischel. close. Uh, Fischel. De defeated Evan Kowalski. And number one qualifier was Justin Hoff. Uh, super gas, Pete, both, Bob, yep. both, both, uh, defeated Craig Maddox and Gary Hasselbrook qualified number one and super street, John Dexter defeated John hop and John Dexter also qualified number one. Right, very cool. So our guest is actually going to be here in just a few minutes. So we'll just kind of. Actually, why don't we go to the national event? We'll just kind of chug through that while we're waiting. Um, Kaylin Rose Genther is going to be joining us in, again, just a few minutes. Um, she works for NHRA Division One. ran her first divisional this past weekend in her dad's um, Superstock Mustang at Cecil County. Made the top eight race, made a couple of rounds, um, was pretty happy with her debut, if you will, in her dad's car. That's so no small accomplishment, accomplishment, that's for sure. Absolutely not. Um, so, Sunday, final rounds, Texas NHRA Fall Nationals held at the Texas Motorplex, race number 17 of 20. It's kind of hard to believe there's only three left. It just seems like we were talking about, excuse me, talking about Orlando not too long ago. Uh, let's see. We're gonna, let's do let's start with the pro classes first. Right let's do this. Top fuel bringing home the win. Justin Ashley, 3.759, 326 miles an hour to take out Steve Torrance, who everybody pretty much thought was unstoppable. And he's gotten stopped a couple of times this year. Not many, but a couple. What round did Brittany lose? Uh I can look that up. I'll look that up while you're doing your. Yeah, attack. don't go crazy. I yeah. know the other thing you're going to ask me. Uh, <laughs> and I actually looked at it too earlier, and I'm like, I should probably just put that in there. I know it's going to come up. Poor Brittany. Uh, hate mail. That's uh, all right. Funny cut shoulders. That's right. <laughs> we can take it. But yeah, it took out Steve Torrance, who ran a 376 with a four at 321 miles an hour. Funny car, Ron Caps in his Dodge Charger, 393 flat, 326 miles an hour. It took out Matt Hagen in his Dodge Charger, uh, ran a 391 to the nine at 328 miles an hour. It's going to be a tight points battle between those two. Absolutely. I believe that's one and two in points, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're correct. So, one of the good stories from the weekend, Pro Stock. Greg Anderson, win number 98. If I read it correctly, that puts him one win over WJ. Is that right? That is correct. That is correct. Which so, Greg <laughs> Anderson and his Kind Chevy of breaks Camaro. my heart because I'm a big WJ fan, but you, you just can't take anything away from what Greg Anderson's done in his career. He's unbelievable. Give us just one sec, Kalen. Bottom left corner, just unmute yourself. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Not bad. Hang tight for just one sec. We're just going to finish up the pro results from this past weekend. No worries. Uh, so Anderson defeated Chris Magaha, who actually lit the cherry, as Pete would like to say. Um, 
to take home win number 98 to put him one over WJ. So now the question is, will he get 100 by the end of the year? No. Three races left. Not happening. You don't think so? Uh, I, I think pro stock's way too tight for someone to win the last three out of four. Um, I, I don't see it happening. I mean, it can. He's definitely done it before, but I don't think the elite crew will allow that to happen. All right. Last but not least for the pro categories, pro stock bike, Matt Smith, 683 of the nine at 199, defeated Hector Arana Jr., who lit the cherry. Wow. Yep. And, and we all know what Matt Smith's nickname is, right? Do you remember? <laughs> yes, let's not go there. <laughs> well, he said it 35 times on the air. So well, what's that's him now? That, well, that's Steve. Let, well, let, that's, that's Steve's battle. We'll let him. <laughs> I have enough battles of our own. You know yeah, I mean? you're right. <laughs> All right. So park those for a few minutes. What's up, Kaylin? What's up? For those of you that do not know, this is the wonderful and amazing Kalen Gunther. I am pronouncing your last name right, correct? Gunther, yeah, pretty close. Right on. Uh, she works for NHRA Division One. She works in the lane. She also lugs a camera around on occasion. And she made her debut this weekend in her dad's nicely turned out red super stock Ford Mustang at oh, yeah. Cecil County. Super exciting. It was Super awesome. Super exciting. <laughs> now you, you made the top eight race. I did. Well, how, how was how'd that feel? That I'm it was pretty surprising, honestly. I was number four out of the eight. So it was it was a really good experience. Good feeling. How how, how far into the top eight race did you get? I only got to the first round, but that, that wasn't a point. It was it was my first time, so I, I really didn't have, you know, huge expectations, but it was it was a really cool feeling. So, top eight race, first divisional. You made a couple of rounds in the actual event itself. I did. Yeah, it was. I got my first ever round win. Um, I did run super comp before getting my license. But um, I got my license on Thursday in my dad's car, and um, I didn't make it to second round. So that was that was pretty awesome. It was a really good feeling. So I can't I can't complain. I um, I did get into second round with a red light, but hopefully next time I can I can earn that round win. Take what you can get sometimes, right? Especially when you're just really getting going in a, in a in a whole new toy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I I talked to Pete before we came on the air, and just kind of told him who you were, and he's like, "All right, I I know who that is now." But you did insult him. I have to I have to tell you that you called him you, you called him Mister Sanka. I I do that with. Everybody, it's, I, you, it's I, a sign <laughs> of respect, Chris. Something that you should probably learn someday. I'm older I, than you. I'm older than you, Pete. Yeah, good, good point, Mr. Barnes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do get corrected a lot and told what the first names are, but I do see everybody's last names on these letters. So I just, Mr. Mr. Sanko. Okay. Is I am person. totally fine with that. I'm getting called Mr. Sanko all the time. It's by people that are 14 years old, but that's okay. <laughs> it, it's all a good fun, Kalen. We when you when you get to be our age, a, you you kind of chuckle about it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Just as long as you don't call me sir or mister, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> I'll remember that. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Go ahead, Pete. So I got a question for you. Go you for went it. through the top eight race. Okay, now, now it's time for the big race. You let go of the button, first round. You go through the traps and your wind light comes on. 
How loud was the yell inside the helmet? It was really loud, <laughs> yep. really loud. I actually, my voice is not at 100% because I was just screaming all weekend. I was so excited. No I feeling. Actually, and, and I'm going to tell you something right now. Don't ever think that someone red lighting against you isn't around when. Because when someone red lights next to you, it's usually because they're taking you seriously. So unless their fingers slipped off the button or they backed out of the beams or something goofy like that, they're taking you seriously. And that's usually why they red light. So you earned that. Thank you. Or that's, that's what I tell myself all the time. <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not, but I'll take it. <laughs> Great yeah, job. I, and what was your top eight race you guys qualify off of reaction time, correct? Yes. And it was that, a uh, 012. 012. 012 like, now, yes. For most people that watch the show, no, but for some of them that don't, uh, no delay box allowed in super stock or stock for that matter. Mm -hmm. um, so you cut a 12 light and qualified for the top eight race uh, with no delay box, first time in the car, first divisional. Uh, don't worry about not winning the first round of the top eight race. You did a hell of a job to get there. So great job this weekend. Thank you. I appreciate it. You got it. it it was awesome. I, I, my dad's going to have to fight me to get back in his own car. <laughs> what, uh, tell us a little bit about the car. Um, well, like I, I told Mr. Barnes earlier that I'm not like a professional. Um, so I don't really know everything. About That's okay. It's, it's a Ford Mustang now, right? Yes. It's a 2002 Cobra Jet. Uh, it has a 428 in it. Yep. Um, I just I just know that it is awesome. My dad did a great job at it. <laughs> what uh, what class are you running at? Uh, FGTF. Excellent. So you do know quite a bit. There's nothing wrong with that. That's good enough for me. Decent amount. <laughs> Actually, you could lie about the rest, and I wouldn't know the difference. So you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, seriously, uh, great job this weekend. You you did a hell of a job. You did a hell of a lot better than my debut. So that's that's for sure. Great Thank job. You. Thank you. So how long have you been competing and what got you started? What was your first race car? I do run um, Phil Langford's Gold Rush Dragster in the Super Comp. Um, so in 2019, I actually went down to Frank Hawley's and got my Super Comp license. And I have ran in... I believe four races of Rob Keister's dot 90 mid Atlantic association. Um, that's basically it. And then now this one. So it's pretty awesome. I am hooked. I do have the bug, but my, um, what got me all into racing is my dad. Um, ever since I was little, he's always been at the racetrack. Um, He's raced three different cars. The one that I really, really remember is the Roy Hill Pro Stock truck that he used to race. Yeah. And he's, he's the one that got me to fall in love with drag racing. So he's probably watching right now. Well, kind of hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you don't have an issue with never having a savings account because if you love cars, that's usually what happens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just not to get off the subject, but uh, Mr. Keister uh, corrected us. They do not have pro stock at Bristol. So if Greg Anderson's going to get to 100 wins, he's got to win out. Yeah, I just saw that. Cool. Hey, like I said, you never know. Yeah, you know. And he would like to be referred to from now on as Mr. Keister. As Mr. Keister. We will all refer to you, Rob, as Mr. Keister the second. The second. That's right. The second. Yeah, because yeah, the real Mr. Keister is Mr. Keister in my book. Actually, we you know what we could call him? We'll call him Keister Light. Mr. Keister Light. <laughs> Keister 2.0. <laughs> 2.0. See, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I told you this was going to be painless, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was actually a little nervous coming on. but Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing you need to be nervous about around here, that's for sure. No, not, especially not with us. No. Um, I mean, we only get 10,000 views a week, so it's, it's not that much pressure. Don't worry about it. 
Now, you also work for the division. How long have you worked for NHRA Division One? I would say I, I've lost track after um, COVID happened, but um, about like three years now. And I have enjoyed every single minute of it. Every, uh, every official has treated me like they are like my family. So I, I love it. I love coming to each race and working the staging lanes and seeing all of my racing buddies and all of the officials. But I uh, have been, I believe, three years now. Now, you don't just do the lanes because I know I've seen you with a camera in your hand. So you have a little bit of different duty at some some events. Is that correct? Uh, the only time that you saw me with a camera was probably at Cecil and I was helping Diane and then I got roped in to NHRA after that. So I haven't really touched a camera since then. All right. But I do, I did start off with D1 TV and then I learned how to do the lanes and I've been back there ever since. Now looking down the road when, uh, when the snow melts and everything, even though we don't have any yet, it's inevitable that it will be here. What's uh, 2022 looking like for you, young lady, racing wise? I have absolutely no idea, not a clue yet. I did just start school not long ago, so that's my main focus. But if I get into a car again, that'd be amazing. If I work for NHRA, that'd be awesome too. But as of now, I don't really know. I don't really have a plan. Just focusing on school. So what next question, Ned, is what are you studying? What are you going to school for? <laughs> yeah. computer, computer science. Excellent. Yep. Way for the future. My daughter is actually looking to do the same thing. So if we hit you up for some advice, don't be surprised. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have tech crash issues, which happens here all the time. Yeah, we didn't even play an intro song this week. <laughs> I think so. Well, I didn't hear it. I don't know if anyone else heard it. But Whatever. Yeah, Whatever. it's all good. So you've raced the dragster. You've raced the Mustang. You hang out in the staging lanes and tell people where to line up. What would you... If somebody came to you down the road next year, year after whatever, and threw you the keys to the proverbial keys to whatever, what would you like to try? Top tricer, top sportsman. Oh yeah. <laughs> that seems to be the dominant answer, isn't it, Pete? Yeah, I thought she was really gonna say super street and a Vega wagon, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I would like I would like to try everything. I mean, my favorite class will definitely always be super stock just because it was just so much fun. Yep. But I would definitely like to try uh, top sportsman or top dragster. Yeah. Truth be told, if someone pointed a key shelf to me and told me to pick one, I'd be picking top dragster or uh, top sportsman too. Yeah. Can't beat a door car. Nope. <laughs> Go over and talk to Freddie, see if he'll let you run the 57 one time. Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll definitely get on that. <laughs> I'd, I'd be happy with Freddie's backup car, the Nova. There you go. I'd suffer through that with no problem at all. There you go. Um, so the first time you drove, ever drove, even just like driving it around the pits, your dad's Mustang, when you got in it, closed the door, hit the button and lit the fires, was it like, yes i have arrived <laughs> hearing that hearing that thing oh yeah it was it was a confidence booster i loved it just driving around the pits i uh i could not wait until he let me take it down the track <laughs> awesome what the what does the car run uh 9 30s that's a nice ride yeah it was so much fun you enjoy that more than super comp or the jury yeah. fell out? Yes, I enjoyed it much more than super comp. Because you're like in the air and you're yeah, like yeah. clouds and birds and stuff. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and when you come down, you hope you're going forward. Yeah, all that good stuff. <laughs> yeah, I actually did have that scare in the first round of the top eight. I um 
I unloaded the tires. I was on the wheelie bar. And I came back down and I was pointing towards the wall. It's like, oh, well, this is what it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> that gets your attention, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that it was fun. Good. At least you didn't end up like the gentleman in the uh the Corvette Pro Mod this past weekend. Cool. And, uh, and, oh yeah. Um, and us. So I never knew drifting in a pro mod was a thing. Yeah. Oh, I, did you I'm, see that? And he didn't touch a wall, right? No, he didn't touch the wall oh. at all. The air got under the back. It lifted off the ground. It came down. I mean, I'm sure he needs four tires and some apparel. But other than that, that was pretty amazing that it didn't hit anything. So are you going to be attending the Division One banquet? And do you have duties at the, uh, at the banquets? I don't know if I have duties, but I will be there. I will definitely be there. It'll be my first banquet. So I'm pretty excited about that too. Cool, cool. Yeah. How about it, Pete? Yeah, he pretty much covered all the bases for me. I got all the technical questions out of the way. There you um, go. Yeah, I'm curious as to if if you find out down the road uh, what your racing schedule is like, let us know. Um, yeah, absolutely. Because it would be cool if you're racing at a race that I'm at, I could like throw something at you and freak you out or something <laughs> you can easily find me i have the red shoes on i'm dorothy of the lanes so. oh there you go <laughs> <laughs> either that or over at the uh the she shed on wheels yeah yep i like hanging out with diane yeah she's awesome yeah diane's one of the best people ever yeah absolutely well, see, and the, the cool thing about peach racing is is he he'll fully admit that he can make a sandwich as he's driving down the track and you know wave to people and you know eat his sandwich as he's chugging <laughs> along <laughs> until about a thousand feet then it starts getting exciting yeah then he's actually got to look to the left and see what's going or the right depending on which lane he's in either yeah, i prefer <laughs> what's going on yeah Oh, oh, here comes the car. I better, better play now. <laughs> and well, then I screwed it up, and then I had plenty of time to eat a sandwich. So it's, it's all there, you, there you go. <laughs> first, first round, Pete. That's it. <laughs> um, how about sponsors? Do you the help your uh, dad's racing operation, and obviously yours as well? Do I have any sponsors? <laughs> no, I don't have how, any sponsors. How about your dad? Nope, we no. don't. We don't. We don't really have any sponsors now. Just, just the right rear pocket. Yep, yep. <laughs> All out of the pocket. Well, very cool. Well, you, you know, you have everything to be proud of with making your debut in a, you know, a fast door car. And uh, you know, good job. Obviously, like I said, the top eight race, the first divisional in the car. You know, and first round, it's a learning mm -hmm. experience. And mm -hmm. Now you just take and you go from there. Yep. It's very exciting. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I'm glad you could come on for a little bit. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Have a good night, Kaylin. Thank you. You too. All right. Take, take care. care. Bye. Bye-bye. So Todd Logan said, how about a dragster going 608 at 230 miles an hour? Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I would I like to look at top sportsman cars to me they're you know they're like so close to pro mods i just love looking at them but again if someone said here's the top dragster get in it i would not say no that's for sure right and uh rob also said at least i was referred to as mr keister yes yes and not we, not other names we we call him lots of things mr keister might be one of them <laughs> I'm trying to get back to my results over here. All right. So let's pick up where we left off. We left off at Pro Stock Motorcycle. Yep. In Texas. Yep. So let's move on to Top Alcohol Dragster because there's actually some a little bit of stuff to talk about as we chug through the national event results, especially in Top Alcohol Dragster. Uh, Division One's Jackie Frick brought home the Wally, run uh, 520 with a four at 275 miles an hour. 
to defeat Matthew Cummings, who ran a 524 at 271. Now, one other thing I want to point out, if you're a member of RNN, you had an above average chance of winning this weekend. We will yeah, cover that we, as we go. We represented this weekend, didn't we? We were, we were there, baby. All right, Jackie Frick, who is also a member of Racers News Network, wins her sixth national event, Wally, and her second this season. Obviously, the first one was when she won the U.S. Nationals in Indy this, this year. Right. That's the race where when she got interviewed, she, what did she say? She drove like a doofus or something? It was, it was, you know, she was giving credit to her crew, and... I guess she was struggling on the tree a little bit. And she said, it's all, it, you know, I did it because of my crew because I drove like, she, I'm pretty sure the word she used was doofus. And I was, I saw the interview on one of those Facebook like snippet things. And yeah. oh my God, I was cracking up. I thought that was hysterical. Now, it's my understanding that if Jackie wins the Vegas national event, she will take home the national event, the national championship in top alcohol dragster. Wow. Now I know she already won the division, correct? Won the, she won division one top yep. alcohol dragster. And like I said, that's, that's my understanding from what I was told that if she takes home the win in Vegas at the national, she owns the championship in the, on the national side. Very cool. Well, best yep. of luck to her. And uh, she's doing a hell of a job representing Division One. That's for sure. Absolutely. Uh, top alcohol funny car. The guy who is just plowing through the field in funny car, in alcohol funny car. Doug Gordon, five fifty one two sixty seven over Brian Huff, five fifty six at two sixty two. Uh, Gordon wins his sixteenth national event Wally in his fifth this year. And like I said say that he's steamrolling them is pretty much an understatement. I haven't looked at the updated points. I'm going to do that later. And But I would imagine he pretty much owns it. Yeah. I think it's between him and Bellamyur, I believe. I could be wrong. Uh, comp Eliminator, Dan Thompson in a dragster, 707 at 178 to defeat Keith Mahi uh, in a Chevy Cavalier, 777 with a 7. At 175, uh, Thomas wins his second national event, Wally. And Jimmy Cooter Hidalgo in his Pontiac Firebird dialed a 7 7, uh, excuse me, ran a 978 at 135 to defeat Harvey Emmons III in the Chevy Cavalier, 972 with a 4 at 129. Jimmy Hidalgo Jr. wins his eighth national event, Wally, and his third in Superstock. Stock Eliminator, interesting. I didn't know this until I talked to her on Facebook one night. Brenda Grubbs in her Chevy Camaro 1001 with an 8, 131 to defeat Jerry Emmons and his Camaro 1024, 128. Um, she's also another member of uh, Racers News Network who took home the win this weekend. And she is actually from, originally from New London, uh, Londonderry, New Hampshire. Oh, no kidding. About 30 minutes, 35 minutes um, west of the track, right outside of Manchester. Very cool. Yep. Good stuff. Yeah. And that, that brings us to Supercomp, yep. where uh, Steve Evans defeated Jeremy Heffler. Yep. Uh, and kind of a, well, not kind of, definitely a heartbreaker for uh, Heffler as he, when he brought the RPMs up, uh, the car rolled the beams, and that pretty much handed the win to Steve, uh, which I'm sure was no easy task to get to the final. But uh, when you're there, you want to compete. So that's a that's a tough way to take the loss. So well, I want to add one thing to the to the notes on Supercomp. Yeah. Um, it was originally reported as he um, broke, but then I found out it was he rolled. He that he rolled the yeah. I hope I don't have any stats on uh, Jeremy's career, but uh, you hope to God that that wasn't his first final and that he's already won because 
to get to your first final and lose like that has got to be a definitely got to be a heartbreaker. That's for sure. Absolutely. On to super gas. Austin Williams defeated Jerry DeBusk. Uh, let's see. Austin, we don't have any reaction times on here, huh? No, they don't put reaction times on that one. I will I will make sure that I for the national event. Right, right, right. Yeah. So uh Austin runs a 993 with a seven to Jerry's uh 994 with an eight in his Ford Pro. Uh the bus won that one. This is a rematch of the Houston final, uh, where the bus won. So now they're even in finals, one to one. Um, oh, and it's, I'm sorry, I'm reading on. I'm sorry for not reading this beforehand, no, but fine. it looks like he took a 6,000 stripe, approximately 18 inches. And wow, Austin Williams wins his 16th national event wild. Uh, very impressive. Uh, that puts us to Super Street, where Scooter Wilkins, Chevy Nova, runs a 1094 with a five to defeat John Labham. Labham? Labham. Yep. Labham. yep. Uh, Chevy Camaro. Uh, well, you don't need a mathematician to figure this out. Uh, John runs 1090 with a three and loses. Uh, so that's pretty cut and dry as to what happened on the reaction time as far as that goes. Uh, Wilkins wins his first national event Wally in his first final round. So congratulations to him. All right. Taking it up to top sportsman presented by Vortex Superchargers, Jimmy Lewis and the Pontiac GXP 652 of the nine at 192 to defeat Darian Bosch in the Chevy Camaro who ran 729 with a six at 183. Jimmy Lewis wins his 13th national event Wally in his third one this year. Now, let's see. No, it was in a different race. Never mind. Sorry, my bad. Uh, top dragster presented by Vortex Superchargers, Ross Laras in the dragster, 628 with a five at 183 to defeat Wayne Landry and his dragster, 639 with a seven at 218. Uh, Laris wins his fifth national event at Wally. Pro Mod, Lyle Barnett, Chevy Camaro, 589 with a four at 251, defeated Justin Bond in his Camaro, 582 with a nine at 244. Barnett had the starting line advantage, the power to hold on for the whole shot win. Close one, approximately nine inches on the top end for the win. Do you Barnett know the wins. story with, uh, with Lyle Barnett? First Wally in his first final round. So Lyle really Barnett uh, used to do the kind of racing that Scotty does. Um, Radio versus the world X275. I don't know exactly what class it was. Um, but he had what I believe is either an injector come apart or an injector o-ring fail and he got burnt really really bad uh lots of scarring on his face lots of operations um it was a couple i believe it was a couple of years before he got behind the car but you want to talk about someone that that rose to the occasion uh he fought uh lots of backing lots of help uh from fans and friends and here he is running pro mod for NHRA. Pretty, uh, pretty incredible story for him. Yeah, and there was a there was a really great top end interview with him um, as well. I actually have the video on our Facebook page. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm gonna check that out because I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah, a really good interview. A uh, lot, a lot of emotion in that, I can and only justifiably imagine. so. Yep, I can only imagine. Uh, let's see, wrapping up the texas race top fuel harley we say this every time these guys just they they've got him that's all i can say yeah, yeah. without a doubt uh chris smith 633 with an eight at 221 miles an hour defeated david larson uh obviously had some kind of an issue he ran a 1246 at 73 miles an hour 
Smith with a starting line advantage and makes another great pass for the win. First nationally event Wally in his second final round. That wraps up the 36th annual Texas NHRA Fall Nationals at Texas Motorplex. And now, last but not least, our last, I can't believe we're saying this, our last divisional race for Division One. I'll get some sleepy time music. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it sucks. Yeah. Um, we might hey. as well want to start out. What do you got, some? No, I was just going to say they had a great track to wrap it up. At, you know, Cecil County. Yep. They did a ton of work back in July, maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little early. earlier than that, but yeah, late, yeah they late June, a bunch July. Of stuff to the surface. Oh. Um, excuse me. Yeah, they did a ton of work, and my understanding is there's still more being planned um, for down the road. So. Yeah, the Jim is not afraid to put some money into the facility, that's for sure. I was actually hoping that the Cecil County race fell during, excuse me, like summer break, because I really enjoy going there. It's, it's a hell of a ride. Uh, to get there, but uh, it, it's a really cool track to race at, and I've never had any luck at that track. I don't know. I think last year or the year before, I made it into the top eight race, and I lost in the final to Fetch. Uh, but in the actual divisional race, I don't think I've ever made it out of the first round. Uh, I, I want to say either two or three attempts, so uh, but I do like that just goes to show you I don't just like the tracks I do good at. <laughs> I I've been there twice in the past couple of years, both for um the Mid-Atlantic Dot 90 Association, um yeah. Uncle Buck's pig roast. And oh, yeah. Really, really impressed. And I'm I'm gonna put some effort into it hopefully next year, depending on how stuff goes with my my legs. Um yeah to get back down there for either a divisional race or uncle bucks because especially now that it's been diamond ground and my understanding is nobody has anything to complain about as far as it being lumpy and bumpy so yeah i you know it, it's I, I mean i don't i don't really think i go fast enough to feel like if a surface isn't tip top so i really can't comment on that but one of the things i like about cecil is it kind of reminds me of Lebanon Valley in that it's got like that homey feel to it. Yep. Like when you pull into Maple Grove or you pull into, uh, you know, English town, you have that, that national event. Like, you know, you, you could tell you're, you're at a national event facility. And then when you, when you pull into like a Lebanon Valley or a Cecil, you get that, like that, your home kind of feeling, you know? It's like walking out the back door of your house into your backyard. Yeah, it's just really, I mean, every every track kind of has its own characteristics to it in the, you know, the staging lanes that go around in the circle and driving down onto the racetrack surface and stuff. It, it's just, it's got a pretty cool feel to it. I enjoy going to Cecil. Yeah, yeah that was, that's about a, about a 10 hour drive roughly from um from up here yeah it's about i i believe it takes me around six yeah to get there and that's of course if you can make it over a friggin' bridge without taking you three hours to do that or you know how that yeah, the, first, the, the very first time i went i went down with um rob from d1 tv rob jackson yeah. and i walked in got our tickets we walked in and walked up to keister and i'm like all right, when they have yellow bullet here, where the hell do they put all know, the people? I know. And that's, that's again, that's one of the things that makes, I can't believe I keep yawning like this on the air. I apologize. But that's one of the things that makes that track. It's like you look at it and it looks like you could fit like 15 cars on the property. But then you have an event like yellow bullet where there's, I don't know what they get for a car count, but it's got to be got to be 500 cars, I would assume. And if it's not 500 cars, the people in attendance make up for it because the place yeah. is jam-packed wall-to-wall. Uh, and I mean, and they pull it off. And you don't hear people complaining about, oh, I had to go to Cecil and the, 
you know, it's it's a pain in the ass and it's great. It's like everyone that goes there loves the place. So it's yeah. uh, it's a pretty cool place to go. I enjoy it. It is. All right. Moving on to the season finale, Lucas Loyal Drag Racing Series event for Division One at Cecil County. Let's kick it off with Top Alcohol Dragster, your winner and Racers News Network member, Karen Stalva over at Dan Mercier. Karen with an 89 light, 523 with a one at 275 miles an hour to Dan's 11. 116 with a light excuse me i tripped over my tongue yeah, that happens. uh obviously had some kind of a problem 737 uh at 127 miles an hour uh this is karen's fourth lucas oil drag racing series wally so congratulations to karen stalba and they have a fleet of cars what do they got like 30 or 40 race cars between her, her husband and her kids well i know that kids have a fleet of juniors I believe Tom has a uh, super gas roadster and a super comp dragster. Yeah. I believe Karen has a super comp dragster uh, plus the top alcohol car. Yeah. And then, like you said, the kids with all their cars and they, uh, when they pull in, you know, they're coming in. That's for sure. And if anybody's interested, they are looking for a driver for the tractor trailer. I did see that. I saw that. Dragster. Post. So, all right, moving on to Top Alcohol Funny Car, again, at Cecil County to wrap up the season. DJ Cox over Dan Pomponio. Uh, DJ, 52 on the tree, 545 with an 8, 266 miles an hour to Dan's 64 light, 574 ET, 212 miles an hour. DJ, obviously, with the starting line advantage and the win, runs the quickest pass of the weekend for the win. DJ wins his ninth Lucas Oil Drag Race and Series Wally and also takes the East Region Championship for the second year in a row. Uh, let's see. Comp Eliminator. Joe Carnescali. Your winner, 24 on the tree, 906 with a three at 132 miles an hour to take out the venerable Frank Aragona, who was 29 on the tree. Uh, and again, obviously had a problem, ran 1207 at 72 miles an hour. Yeah, he had uh, a problem. He didn't want to hit any index. <laughs> that was his problem. <laughs> his problem is he's a smart driver. And he didn't want to take any personal index on it. Index. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, well, I didn't. Joe Carnescali wins his first Lucas Oil Draggers in Series Wally in his third final round. Does so it say how? Does it say how far under he went by any chance? Uh, Carnescali. Yeah. Uh, let's see. He was negative zero point. Three nine seven. Oh, okay. I might be wrong about what I said with Aragona then, because he didn't go far enough under where Aragona couldn't get in on it. So maybe he did have an issue. Okay. See if sure. if, if, <laughs> if he went like sixty or seventy under, yeah. and both their lights are the same, then that means obviously Aragona has to go more under than the winner in order to win. And when you get to a certain point, you start changing your own index because you went too far under your index. So a lot of time, like if someone's in their first final and you know that they're saying, I don't care how far under I'm going, I'm going and I'm winning. And you're next to them and you got a combo that you want to protect. You'll just go and like, screw that, let them have it. Cause I'm not going to take a permanent hit, but him only going 30 something under isn't enough for Aragona to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Point get all that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where's the odd bill? Hang out, hang out with Rich Pfizer for a year and you get to learn all this stuff. It's pretty cool. Well, if, 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 here lies the thing. As, as much as I gripe and whine about learning the, uh, the personal index, love Comp Eliminator, right. I'd really love to learn how the, 
you know, more about the index. I really would, because I just, I think the class, and I've said it a hundred times, and I'll say it a hundred more. Yeah, class is one of the coolest out there. It's it's That's actually the pretty, and I don't know all the exact numbers. I believe, I believe it's like six tenths or more, and like it's like from six to sixty nine. You take a hit for the day, and 69 and over, or 70 and over, you take a, a permanent hit or a hit for the year. But it's actually, it's not that hard to explain. I could get the exact numbers, uh, and I do know that the numbers are combined, too. So it's not just like, um, like if you run like 62 under and then 64 under, they add the two and the four and it, it gets added up to a total where then if you get the 70 under, you get hit or something like that. But I could get the exact numbers for you and a half an hour phone conversation and you'll, you'll get it. If I can figure it out, it's not hard. So I'll be a complimented genius. There you will. <laughs> All right. So let's see round seven finals super stock at Cecil County. Racers News Network member, Patrick Glade, uh, 111 on the tree, 973 with a seven on a 978 dial to take the wind over a red lighting, Paul Ricci, who dialed 8-0, ran a 977, obviously, throwing out the window right from the word go. Yep. Uh, when Patrick wins his first Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series Wally in his first final round. In a car you don't see that often, a Buick Somerset, the short the the short wheelbase. Yep, like, it looks you know kind of like the Achieva, right? That size, like a square version of the Achieva. Yep, trunk car. Yep. Uh, let's see, stock eliminator. Todd Hoven, heads up with Anthony Fetch, double A stock automatic, ten seventy, index. Todd, 57 on the tree, 957 with a one at 137 to beat Anthony Fetch, who was 18 on the tree, 1001 with a five at 133 miles an hour. I love it when I just see underneath it. Heads up. Yeah, right. Takes a lot of the mystery out of it. Yep. Uh, Fetch had the starting line advantage, but <clears throat> Todd uh, was able to chase him down and take the win. So. Congratulations. Todd wins his first Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series Wally and his second this season. If I remember correctly, he was the one who also went heads up with Johnny Gray at the national event at New England. Yes, and Johnny Gray won that one, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. yes. Oh, maybe it wasn't that. Maybe it was double A stock and an A stock, I think. I'd have to, I'd have to backtrack, but. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Anyways, it was a great race. So that brings us to Super Comp, correct? Super Comp. So the 890 guys for the last race of the year in division, uh, Kent Hanley defeated Ken Moses. Uh, Hanley was 22 on the tree and ran an 891 with a zero. To Ken's a little bit slow, 047 light, and ran an 892 with a two. Uh, Hanley took the starting line advantage and wins his 15th Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series Wally. And it's his second of the season. And I'll tell you what, when you're in a dot ninety class and you could win two Wallys in the same season, you're doing pretty good. You're having yourself one hell of a year, no doubt. Absolutely. And is, is Kent a member of RNN? Uh, Kent is also a member of RNN. That also is correct. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna check. Keep keep chugging along. I want to say Todd Hogan might be. You got it. Uh, 990 Super Gas. Jake Barbado takes home the win. Uh, he, Jakester. What's that? Jakester. Jakester, yeah. Jakester. Uh, he beat uh, Michael Hondras. Hondras. I said that. Hondras. <clears throat> Jake was uh, 50 on the tree. And 991 with a four to Michael's 60 on the tree 
uh, and breaking out 987 with a seven. Uh, let's see, Jake wins his second Lucas Oil Drag Racing Wally. So congratulations to uh, Jake and Team Barbado. And last but not least, Super Street. Uh, my buddy and friend of the show, Chris D. Pascal, uh, defeated a red lighting Brian Sawyer. Chris was 29 on the tree and runs a 1087 with a seven to Brian's uh, 001 red light. And to add insult to injury, he runs a 1089 with a nine. So he's two thou away from a perfect package, just two thou the wrong way. Um, whenever you race Brian Sawyer or Chris uh, in any round, much less a final, uh, you're in for a fight. So congratulations to Chris and Brian on his runner up. And Chris wins his ninth Lucas Oil Drag Racing Wally. And I know because I know Chris personally, he also has a couple championship Wallys uh, and a couple of national event Wallys on the trophy shelf to go with those nine Lucas Oil wins. Congratulations. All right. Moving on to Tommy Tate Top Dragster presented by Select Performance. Uh, Brandon Miller, also a friend of Racers News Network, over at Chris Ladiga. Let's go with that. Ladiga. Uh, Brandon, let's see. 778 on the tree, uh, 23 second ET. Uh, all right, Ladia turned on the red light to give Brandon the win. Brandon wins his first Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series Wally in his third final round. And he won national event at the beginning of the year, I believe it was. Is that correct? Because we did have him on as a guest. Uh, Gainesville? Yeah, I believe it was the Gainesville. Not only yeah. was it a national event, but it was one hell of a national event, too. I believe he won Gainesville. Yes. Yep. Uh, let's see. Tommy Tate, top sportsman presented by Select Performance. Ron Regal over at Nick Ladiga. Uh, let's see, Ron, 26 on the tree, 709 with a three at 193. To better, Nick's 25 light, 692 with a six at 184. Uh, let's see, Ladiga with a tick of, of advantage on the tree, but held on for the win. He gets his third Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series Wally in the second this year. Now, this is where... Oh, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong again. Where did I see? Am I being stupid? There we go. Ladiga. Okay, Chris Ladiga and Nick Ladiga. There we go. Got it now. Sorry. Momentary. That happens. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Junior Dragster, age six to nine. One of Pete's buddy's kids. And actually a friend of the show as well. Cole Payone. Took out Eli Stack in the six to nine junior dragsters. Uh, Cole with a 38 light, 1209 with a three at 52 miles an hour to Eli's 65 on the tree, 1211 at 51 miles an hour. Uh, obviously, Payone with the starting line of edge and takes home the win. Now, they get the, the junior kids, do they get a full size Wally or do they get a mini? I, I feel like it's a smaller one and it's a square bottom, but I could be totally off in what I'm saying. I just, I'm trying to go by like what I picture in my head. And uh, for some reason, that's what I'm seeing, but I could be wrong. Uh, let's see. Junior Dragster, age 10 to 12. Another stack kid. They're all over the place. <laughs> the, sure. st the stacks are no joke. And uh, no, including Papa Stack, when he gets behind a car, he's pretty nasty, too. Yep. Behind the wheel of a car, I should say. All right. James Stack Jr. takes the win over at Madison Schaumburger. Uh James with a 106 on the tree, 903 with a three at 71 miles an hour to Madison's 134, 889 with a six at 73 miles an hour for the win. Obviously, James with the starting line advantage holds on to take the win. Last but not least, final round, 
junior dragster, 13 to 17 year olds. Madeline Torchia over Tyler D. Pascal, D. Pasquale. Uh, Madeline 49 on the tree, 797 with a three, 82 miles an hour. To Tyler's 121 on the tree, 789 with an O to at 81 miles an hour. She gets the advantage on the tree and holds on to take the win. What is as have you ever talked to Chris about what it's like having kids raise juniors, especially if you have a lot of kids? And then you if you're taking care of if you're running like one or even just one full-size car of your own and he he has what two cars is that correct of his own is um, dragster I, and so i believe at one time he had three going uh i think it's two now but don't quote me on that but i will tell you that i feel like when i go to the racetrack i work on my car and i don't know if you've ever paid attention to a family that runs junior dragsters, how much work goes into it. And then when you have multiple junior dragsters and then you're trying to race away a race on your own, I, I don't know. I don't know how he does it. I, you know, his wife is awesome. I know she does a lot to help out, but my God, it's a lot of work. <laughs> and I, I don't know that that game is not for everyone. I will tell you that because He's constantly working and they're competitive. It's not like they're running around like idiots and they don't have their stuff together and they're always in the back of the pack. Not only are they working their butts off, but they're competing and they're no one is real excited when one of them lines up against you. That's for sure. That uh, just because I know um, Tyler, that was his first race in his new car. And that car actually came from Linda Prizer, uh, because she's going to be driving the stocker next year. So uh, for him to go to the final in his uh, in the first race with that car is pretty impressive. And I will tell you, I know it's going to happen in the future. There's no question in my mind, but be very cool to watch father and son uh, share the winner's circle, because that would be a that pretty a, be a pretty emotional thing. But. Uh, knowing the way Chris drives and how good Tyler is, it, it'll happen. It'll definitely happen. Now, your question, has Iggy and Amanda ever run the same class or have they always run opposing classes? I don't know them to have ever run the same class. Uh, again, uh, I am the furthest thing in the world from the stat guy, but I'm almost positive that she's always been super comp. And I know he's been super gassed for as long as I can remember. All right. Coming up next weekend, NHRA Thunder Valley Nationals, October 15th through the 17th. And no Chris Bach will not be contested there. Thanks to Rob Keister letting us know. Now, curiosity is, I wonder if they'll have Mountain Motor Pro Stock in lieu of. Hmm, that's a good question. Sure. Or Pro Mod. Because Pro, Pro Mod, Mod is contested in all of them, right? Correct. Um, give me two seconds here. I just want to look something up. It's kind of weird that this week's event had Pro Stock, Pro Mod, and Top Fuel Harley. That's a, that's a lot of categories going on. Usually they kind of juggle them around so they don't you know so they're not all at one but right they had them all at this one i'm gonna look something up here real quick oh actually gotta go back one page uh let's see all right you asked me a question earlier how did Brittany do second round now we're gonna, we're gonna we should call this like the Britney Force reaction time watch because I I feel, he got me into it. I feel so bad because again, it's I'm sitting here in my chair talking about how she gets beat on a whole shot, and I'm pretty confident if someone put me in the car, I wouldn't even be able to move the thing forward. Never mind cut a light and beat somebody, but uh, 
listen, when you're a pro, you get scrutinized. I mean, that's just what happens, I guess. Yeah. All right. So I'm just breezing through the reaction times to see who's got the best reaction time in round one. Doug Coletta, 37. Pete's new girlfriend, Brittany Force, 90 on the tree in round one. Let's move on to round two. Best reaction time, Steve Torrance, 25. Wow. 25 Brittany, and a top fuel car. That's unbelievable. Yep. Brittany Force, 74. And does it say uh, who beat her and what their light was? Uh, let's see. She actually made it into round three. So uh, she went up against. Joe Morrison huh. from New Jersey. Okay. Round one. Uh, round two, Clay Milliken. She was 74 with a 371. He was 53 with a 373. So she just Ooh, that was, that was a tight race. Uh, let's see. Round three, she went up against Justin Ashley. He was 61. At, with a 374, she was 81 with a 372. So we got her on a whole shot. Whole oh, shot again. Yep. Uh... Oh. If anybody knows the Force family, it's not my fault. It's his fault. <laughs> oh, God. She, I mean, she has to be beside herself. If she's got any force in her at all, she's got to be, <laughs> she's got to just know that, uh, but, but I mean, again, what was her light in the final of the third round? Uh, 81. All right. And so she was, Justin Ashley had a 61. All right. So she's, if my memory serves me correct, 90, 81, 72. Uh, let's see. Round one. Ninety. Yep. Seventy-four. Seventy-four. Eighty-one. So now that's, that's sixteen thousands in three hits. So this is what we were talking about a couple of weeks ago. All right. So three hits, sixteen thousands. I would take that with a delay box. I'd be happy with that. And you know, a car that's much easier to stage and a trans brake and no clutch pedal and all that stuff. So Three hits within 16 thousandths is pretty impressive. But, God, I wish we could move that grouping down, down a little, you know? So, I don't know? Maybe I'm just trying to save face. So if Brittany calls me and wants to put a hitman out on me, I could say, but I did something good. <laughs> I tried to explain it. So in the, in the final round, <laughs> just, <laughs> just did Ashley – uh, I get once again Steve Torrance, which we've already talked about. They were both 35 on the tree. God. Ashley was at 375 with a nine at 326, and he beat Torrance, who was 376 with a four at 321. Yeah, another he just, out, he, he just flat out ran him, right? Yeah, so. hey, nothing wrong with that. Brittany, Brittany watched 2021. I hate you guys. <laughs> Thank God we don't have a ton of listeners, because good Lord. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. One, of the, one of the best experiences I've ever had in my racing career is uh, not last year, but the year before we went to PRI. And Jerron got us a tour of Forces Shop in Indy. And my God, I mean, if you're into uh racing or history or you know the history of racing any of that stuff it was it was an amazing tour and now all i can envision is a picture of me on the front window saying don't let this not, enter, not allowed i was just gonna that was gonna be my my sarcastic <laughs> comment was you will never ever be allowed in oh, God, again I, luckily i saved the picture so i'll have a memory <laughs> oh well um, so let's see. We got again Thunder Valley coming up. NHRA Division One is wrapped. 
calling it a season. So um, I know a couple of people have already said they're going to head down to North Carolina. Tracers are chasing. Divisional points. There was one particular person I was surprised not to see on any of the result sheets for this weekend at Cecil, but as it was pointed out to me, excuse me, maybe he's just biding his time. Yeah, I mean, if you get if you get a particular racer that, uh, like me, for instance, I I love going to Cecil, but the track has a bear very kind to me. Uh, if you have one or two claims left and let's say you've had much better luck at North Carolina at the rock than you have at Cecil and uh, drag racers tend to be a superstitious bunch that if you got one claim left and you, know, you might say, listen, I have much better luck there. I'm, I'm going to wait and go there. You know, that's where I'm headed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? So like I said, up here in division one, they have two championships confirmed. They have top alcohol dragster to Fink Racing and Jackie Frick, the, the wheel lady. Um, top alcohol funny car, DJ Cox and the, uh, the Dick's Racing crew. Congratulations to them. Uh, the next few weeks will most certainly tell the tale. I wouldn't be surprised if coming out of Rockingham, I'd have to look at the date. I don't remember exactly when it is that one, one or two more might be settled. So and, a couple of uh, <clears throat> upcoming in the next two weeks, Gary Federico just pointed out that uh, they're going to be running the 850 index plus, which I would assume the plus means other index classes uh, at ACO the next two weekends in a row. So uh, if you're looking to check out some racing or if you have a 850 plus car, uh, check them out because race is always good down at ACO. Um, yeah, so like I said, the there's more events to come up, just not up here in the great northeast. In the tundra. Um, yep. Uh, Maine, Massachusetts is drama. Maine, yeah, yeah. Maine, Massachusetts. Maine, Maine, and New Hampshire. Yeah. You said anything north of New York is just like it's all one thing up there. <laughs> all right. right. So that's that. Like I said. Best of luck got, to, what do you got going on for next week? I'm working on a few things. Nothing has been confirmed. I'm working on a a uh, top alcohol funny car driver, a top alcohol dragster driver. I just kind of put the word out. I mean, unfortunately, we're getting to that time of the year where, yeah. you know, it's you got to look at our ugly mugs a little bit more than having somebody else with us. But um, yeah, yeah. I never give up. I never surrender. And I know Jerron has been real busy with work and he's he's actually camping out out west for a few weeks. I think. Yeah, he was at the Vegas race, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. So I believe he's staying out there for the next week or for two. For the national when that comes to, yeah, who knows. So um, we have some when other I come stuff. Back, I want to come back as Jerron. I'll tell you that, man. He's no joke. <laughs> All right, my man. I'm going to go watch my racing soap operas. Yep. Soap opera time for, for Pete. No, nope, we'll be out of here. I will be, ba I will be back next Monday night with results from Thunder Valley. And you never know what else, what other kind of magic I might pull out of my sleeve. That's it. All right, gang. Have a great night. Been a and pleasure, we'll buddy. You too. We'll talk to you soon, Pete. See you soon. See you guys. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you to Kalen Rose Genther for coming on and hanging out with us as well. Awesome conversation. Hope she had fun. And we'll talk to everybody next Monday night, 7 o'clock. See you.